Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I have some ranting to do today, and I will be getting all of my pent-up energy out um, by the end of the week in reference to the season ending for the Indiana Fever and Caitlin Clark going out with 25 points, nine assists, and six rebounds in an 87-81 loss to the Connecticut Sun. Before we jump in, thank you all so much for jumping in last night with us on our live podcast. We had 392 people in the room at peak. So we thank you for your continued support of our channel. We greatly appreciate it. And we look forward to having many, many more lives as our our viewership continues to grow as we get closer and closer to 5,000 subscribers. Well, let's just jump on in. The topic is clearly what it is across the bottom of the screen. Alyssa Thomas voiced her feelings about Caitlin Clark's fans, and in large part, Caitlin Clark. So, yeah, she voiced her opinion and her feelings on what she called attacks of racial and all types of attacks. But I'll let you listen to what she had to say. Into this series and before each game, but before each tip off from the from each tip off to the final whistle, the Sun have been locked in professional and taking care of business. What does it say to the professionality of this team that you've been able to put shut out the noise? Uh, honestly, it's it's been a lot of nonsense. Um, I think in my 11 year career, I've, I've never experienced the the racial comments from the Indiana Fever fan base. Um, you know, we had her face on a serious matter that happened in, in this world, and it's unacceptable, honestly. And um, yeah, there, there's no place for it. And we've been professional throughout the whole entire thing, but I, I've, I've never been called the things that I've been called on, on social media. And, and, and there's no place for it. And, and you know, basketball is headed in, in, in a great direction. But nah, we, we, don't, we don't want fans that are, are going to degrade us and, and call us racial names. I mean, we already see what, what's happening in the world and, and what we have to deal with in that aspect. And, you know, we come to play basketball for our job and it's fun. but. We don't want to go to work every day and, and, and have social media blown up over, over things like that. It's, it's, it's uncalled for, and something needs to be done, whether it's you know them checking their fans or this league checking. There's, there's no time for it anymore. So let's talk about her comments. She wants the Indiana Fever to check their fans. She wants the league to check their fans. Why doesn't she check her own teammate? By no means are racial slurs and attacks okay or acceptable in any world. And they should not be dismissed. And they should not be ignored. But to put an attack on... But to put an attack on an entire fan base and make a statement like... I don't know, the one that her teammate, Dijanae Carrington, posted where she says, dog, how one cannot be bothered by their name being used to justify racism, bigotry, misogyny, xenophobia, homophobia, and their intersection intersection sectionalities of them all is nuts. We all see the shit. We all have a platform. We all have a voice, and they all hold weight. Silence is a luxury. Who do you think Dijanae Carrington is taking a shot at? And this was on June 13th, less than a month into Caitlin Clark's rookie season. Who is she taking a shot at? She's taking a shot at Caitlin Clark. She's basically saying Caitlin Clark is allowing her fan base to attack people. You know, <clears throat> it's kind of interesting how Caitlin Clark's fan base at Iowa. Outside of LSU, no one attacked, no one was ever saying that her fan base was attacking people racially. No one ever said that they were attacking sexuality. The only reason sexuality comes into the conversation of the WNBA is the WNBA is 80% lesbian, and that's fine. But no one tried to ice Caitlin Clark out in college. No one tried to poo-poo on her success in college. 
But in the WNBA, people have gone out of their way to poo-poo her success. And it's crazy to see the amount of poo-pooing of success she has had to deal with from members of the WNBA, coaches and players alike, as well as former players. So what are you talking about exactly? Everyone's a racist because a few people are assholes? This is one right here, again. Dog, how can one not be bothered? This is Dijon Carrington. Tell me why she feels the need to attack Caitlin Clark. She's put it, she's basically blasting Caitlin Clark and making it Caitlin Clark's responsibility to take care of the things that fans say. How is it the responsibility of Caitlin Clark to, re, to, to control human beings? Dijanae Carrington is, is she controlling human beings who are saying the exact opposite things? About Caitlin Clark, because Caitlin Clark, I have a page. I have pages and pages and pages of it in comments of nastiness and racial nastiness and disrespectful stuff on and on and on. Dijanae Carrington eye gouged this woman on Sunday, pretended she didn't know about it, laughed about it in a game, and then doesn't even have the decency to apologize for something that she claims she didn't know about. So your teammate's a liar, Alyssa. And you might, and you know what? I know there was a post where DJ Carrington claims she got some type of threat to her email. How exactly did someone find DJ Carrington's email? I'd love to know. I mean, realistically, I'd love to. I'm sure there's ways to do it. But how did they find her exact email address? <clears throat> it's a little bit weird to me. Makes me wonder if it was actually a fan of Caitlin Clark or some random person who knows DeJanae Carrington to start some crap up. I don't know. I'm not speculating. But it's very, very weird with the amount of email addresses most people have that you'd find an email address attached to DeJanae Carrington that you would email her that stuff. And then this is another thing right here where a reporter asks Caitlin Clark directly about her name being weaponized. And she responds. It's disappointing. Everyone, are, everyone deserves respect. The women in our league deserve the same amount of respect. What exactly did Caitlin Clark do wrong here? Nothing. She said that they shouldn't do that, basically. Well, that's, but she's not going to sit here and go castigate people that are cheering for her. Is Angel Reese doing that? When people are attacking Clark and calling her a, a, a cracker? Here's another one. Um, oh, here's another one. This is Angel Reese. Here's Angel Reese. Where is that tweet? This is Angel Reese on May 23rd. After they got private planes because of Caitlin Clark, in large part, and that's on getting a win in a packed area, not just because or it's arena, not just because of, of one player on our charter flight. Again, a veiled shot at Caitlin Clark. These are players in the WNBA. Did you see one time this year where Caitlin Clark said one negative word about one player in the WNBA? You did not. It did not happen. It did not happen. And that is tremendously frustrating when you see these different types of comments just disrespecting her. I, I, I it, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. <sighs> And all she does is get shit on by her con contemporaries because they're damn jealous of her. And they've been jealous all year. I don't condone any type of racial attacks by any means. And anyone who does that should be ashamed of themselves. 
But stop acting like that's 99% of the Caitlin Clark fan base, when in reality, it's probably less than 5%. There might be people who are racist in her fan base, and I'm sure there are people who are racist in her fan base. And, and the, the vast majority of them would never say anything publicly. But there might be a small minority who will, who don't care, and will say nasty stuff. The same way fans of Dijanae Carter have been on my tweets and on my posts and on my Instagram, or ours, come on now, the podcast, and made all kinds of nasty-ass comments. Over and over and over again. It's continuous. It's continuous. I, I let's go find this other one right here. This was where was this? Look at this. Here we go. Sometimes you just got to cut the white noise out and get back to what the game is. Sometimes you get to a position where there's just so much attention and so many eyes on you that you're not really having fun out there. Who, who, who is that? And that's just one of Diana Taurasi's comments on Caitlin Clark. Oh, here we go. Here's the other one. <clears throat> Here's another one. Reality is coming. You look superhuman playing against some 18-year-olds, but you're going to have to come play against some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a very long time. Yeah, you're right, and she mopped the floor with your sorry ass. Keep it 100. She mopped the floor with your sorry ass. This is the stuff that you said before she got in the league. Y'all were hating on her before she got in the league. Y'all were jealous of her before she got in the league. But you're going to sit here and get on a podium, a, a, a platform in which no one watched, and get mad because there's some people watching now who don't want to kiss your ass and don't like you? I mean, we can go on and on and on. On and on and on. It is unreal the amount of attacks Oh, this is the funny part. Here, this is the this is comedy right here. Diane Taurasi, it's the new fans. They're really sensitive these days. You can't say anything. It's kind of like you go from kindergarten to first grade, there's a learning adjustment. Then you go from high school to college, there's a learning adjustment. I don't think I said anything that wasn't factually correct. Actually, the sensitive people are you. You were the sensitive one. You were the one that was butt hurt that you didn't get this type of attention when you came out of school. You are the one who wishes you had this type of fanfare and love and adoration. You wished it, along with all your other co contemporaries and colleagues in the WNBA, all of y'all were pissed off. All of y'all. And it's so blatantly obvious. It, it, it smacks you right in the face. Like, it's one after the other, after the other, after the other. They all did it. it it's crazy. <clears throat> Here we go. This is Cheryl Reeve. This is Cheryl Reeve here. I mean, you can't make this shit up. There's so many things where she says, um, she says, I can't, I can't actually find the actual the screenshot. But she says here, is there a re there's a question? Is there a reason why it's not being shown in reference to Minnesota? Because they only care about Caitlin. And Cheryl Reeve replies that part. Like, why are you hating, man? These are that's an attack from a head coach. 
And don't even get us back to Cheryl Swoops. All of these things are racially based. All of them. They're all racially or sexually based. Caitlyn's not a lesbian. Caitlyn's not black. None of them are based in, in basketball. None of them are based in fact of basketball. News flash, Alyssa, news flash, Alyssa Thomas. No one knew your name last year. So you know what? You know what happens when people start watching your sport and start caring about your sport? You're going to have some negative commentary. Ask LeBron James what he feels like on a daily basis. You know what he does? He ignores it. The man's almost 40 years old. He's worth a billion dollars, and he runs the NBA basically as a player. It's noise. Walk away. Move on. Who cares? You don't know these people. They don't really know you. I'm not saying it's okay, but the reality is, oh, let's see. What happened last night at Connecticut? Remember this? This was just last night. Remember, you just talked about the freaking can You just talked about the, you know, you, you just talked about how the fans are. Can you imagine that this happened inside of the first two minutes of the game or something like that? I'm sorry. This happened with, with a minute 30 to go. And I think it was a minute 30 to go. Where you have a fan who's sitting courtside, thrown out of the building. I'm so sorry about my Alexa. She's really irritating me right now myself. I got to say, I don't know how to turn that shit off, to be honest. Look at this nonsense. There you go. Thirty to go in the in the first quarter, and she's already dealing with it from fans that are saying messed up stuff to her. From what I've read in different reports, she was being called the c word by a male who's wearing a bat, a lanyard badge, VIP pass or whatever he is, and he wasn't thrown out of the arena. They talked to him. He was back in his seat. Let's go here. Remember. It's only the Caitlin Clark fans that are the doing are doing this stuff. It's not and it's not your fan. Why is Dewana Bonner getting involved? You mean after she fouled Caitlin Clark with trying to take her legs out? This guy right here. Make him famous. He has a badge on his chest. They take him away for a minute, but the reports were he was back in his seat. If this was the NBA, that guy would have been escorted out of the building. LeBron James has had people thrown out of the building. Russell Westbrook has had people thrown out of the building. But again, you're going to tell me that the problem is only with Caitlin Clark fans. No, that's a fan of yours. That's a fan of the Connecticut Sun. Can you imagine that? That's a fan of the Connecticut Sun. Look, like I said... I, I, I don't condone any of this stuff if it's if it's racially based or any I don't condone I don't condone any hate stuff. But give me a break. Give me a break. You don't want her in your league? Trust me, I promise you. If she was out of your league, nobody would care about your league again. And you can go back to playing in front of 12 people. Then you can go back back to playing in front of 400,000 a game on television. On many nights, no one watching or even knowing that you're playing. But what do you say to all the people that have been spewing this type of hatred towards her? So, Because apparently, it's only, in your mind, it's only the Indiana Fever fans that are doing it. They're all so nasty and hateful. Your teammate eye gouged her on Sunday, acted like she didn't do nothing wrong, acted like she didn't even realize she did it, and still never apologized for it. Sorry to let you know, but you got a classless ass team. And you know what? They were Their class is like the Chicago Sky is classless. It's funny how when Marina Mabry got fouled by Caitlin Clark and kind of bumped her a little bit, and Mabry goes flying like she just got shot out of a cannon and gets up like she wants to fight somebody. Why does everyone – Caitlin Clark reminds me of the kid in school 
who everyone picked on and wanted to fight and thought that they would get their cred by beating up the freaking wimp or beating up beating up the kid that everyone's bullying. And that's what Caitlin Clark comes across like to me when every single time she fouls someone, they act like they want to fight her. Marina B- Mabry, when did you get so tough? When? When did you grow your stones to be so tough? You're fake. You're fake because she barely touched you. You went flying. And then you forearm tomahawked her across the face and didn't get called for a technical foul. Give me a break. All y'all can miss me with the bull crap. Alyssa Thomas, go cry me a river. Dijanae Carrington, go do whatever you do. Cry me river yourself. I hope the Minnesota Lynx beat the brakes off that team. Because this is as classless a unit as it gets. And they will complain and complain and complain. And they don't want you to watch. Guess what? Indiana Fever fans, please don't watch. Don't give them ratings. They don't deserve. They haven't earned your rate, your respect to watch them play. I got nothing left. Let me know what your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell. Come on now.